Yeah, let's let's dive into this conversation. So uh, first question, very simple. Tell me who you are and what you do for and with Hamilton families. Yeah. Uh, so I'm Ana Gomez. I am the Associate Director of Strategic Partnerships at Hamilton Families. Uh, I am born and raised in Oakland, so working in a Bay Area-based organization that hasn't, you know, has started in San Francisco, but is going above and beyond to make influence around the greater Bay Area is something I'm really honored to be part of. So yeah, I have a really cool job um, where I get to reach out um, external organizations around their services and resources. As far as Sacramento, Solano County, Contra Costa, Alameda, um, we, that's how far out our families are living because that's where they can afford it. Mm. And oftentimes they are almost abandoned when they move that far out. Um, you know, San Francisco has been their home for what through whatever circumstance for whatever time and um, they may have family friends that they established and when they move out they don't have that that community net to right. to fall back on so part of my job is to help their specialists and case managers to help them um, have a place that they can call home or give them encouragement and support to build their own community so in a, in a long-winded way, that's what I do, um, but I get to partner with a lot of organizations externally and then partner inter internally with all the programs um, to best provide services to the participants. Wonderful. I mean, so as someone who's native to, you know, the Bay Area, you know, born in Oakland, what what has your experience been as a woman of color kind of transitioning through your life, seeing the changes in this area and how they've affected the work you do at Hamilton Families? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm first generation. My parents are uh, Mexican immigrants and, um, you know, I grew up seeing them struggle through jobs, st struggling through the language, um, through access to basic services and, at a very young age, I was their interpreter um, mm. for a long time. And I still am, but you know, imagine a seven-year-old taking phone calls, um, writing checks for my dad, uh, because they just there was that language barrier. And above it all, um, you know, I, I had a fair life. Um, I didn't know I was growing up in poverty until I grew up and noticed that that was probably poverty. Mm. But um I saw the shift in my community and, you know, my parents always embodied in me and my younger brother to go to school, stay in our lane, stay out of trouble because East Oakland is known for um, gang and violence. And as I was growing up, that was very prevalent in our neighborhood. And I just, I felt really bad for those immigrant families who whose parents often had multiple jobs and their kids didn't want to be home alone. So they found the neighborhood mm -hmm. kids or they found who to be with because their parents were trying to make a living to have a roof over their head and food on their plates and on their table. So that shifted a lot um, as I grew older and homelessness was something that wasn't just like, as you look out the window, it was just very rare. Um, you often knew who the people were and you can give them more, you know, direct services or help or support. They're from your local church. And then out of nowhere, this like boom, where like encampments were going on and like evident, like drug use and just abandonment. And I, it was really crazy for me um, to witness right before my eyes, my, my city, my town changed. Yeah. So I got involved as I could. Um, I worked for the city of Oakland with the council member. And there I really saw the power of the people. Um, the people came out, they spoke in council meetings, they called their council members. And it was something that I admired and I learned from because these were people who, through their jobs, many jobs, through all their communities, through their families, they made time to make an impact um, in their community for even those who couldn't reach out. Um, so that was a really learning lesson for me to work in the city of Oakland and 
take that knowledge and then apply it for nonprofits. So I worked um, in an education system. I was working for some charter schools, nonprofit charter schools. And then I came to Hamilton Families, another nonprofit organization. So it's it's been the background I have is diverse, but I, I always find a way to really tie it back together. And it's really the voice and the power of the people that bring this out and, you know, speaking about like black and brown communities, like there was this huge like divisive factor between our, our two our two folks. Yeah. And I never understood it. I mean, sometimes it's embarrassing to see like my own brown people having these misconceptions about the black community. And it was really hard to break from that um but it also felt very natural to break from that because it's like what you're saying to me is not making any sense Mm -hmm. um your fears are almost irrational and then i learned you know going to college you learn that it's it's the white man's (laughs) image that we are all trying to assimilate to and i was like well, that's not right. And that's not appropriate. And it's not who we are. Yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, it's, I learned a lot from school myself um, and people learn different ways, but I learned from school and I learned from my community and reading, reading was really helpful too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and, and when we talk about it, I, I myself have been on what I, I think up until now has really been a lifelong journey of understanding how we as people of color from our differing communities need to function as one compassionate group of culture that are all working towards equality. And I think it it takes a collective force of both of our communities to do that. Black and brown people together face a lot of very similar challenges in different ways, a lot of them, yes, but I think some of the challenges are very similar. And so when I think about For instance, again, right now we're in the beginning of Black History Month, and I think about what Hispanic Heritage Month is and how I, throughout the years, since it's become a more visible thing, I think it's something that people from those cultures have always acknowledged, but for me, it's become more visible recently, and I go, okay, so let let me use my abilities and forces to support them in the same way I hope they support me, and this is one of those moments. And when I think about allyship, um, it is the larger struggle is trying to get white allies on board but i think the 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 one that i find happens more often is allyship with my you know my brown brothers and sisters towards our community and vice versa and so i love having this conversation with you and earlier you spoke about uh, you know the work that you currently do and i think about like so what's been your experience bringing in those allies you know through to kind of support hamilton families when you talk to other people about the work that you do and try to get them on board to continue and help support hamilton families what have those experiences been like yeah you know some people get to learn from when we reach out um, a lot of people don't realize that we serve single mothers and one of our largest population are black single mothers Mm. and for one reason or another that's not heard that's not known and there's a lot of misconceptions around um you know people want to define what a homeless person is Mm. and the reality is it could be anyone it could be you it could be me any of us can be homeless because of the circumstances that we were put in we put ourselves in i mean it's it's a mixture so um on the flip side, I get to see how many organizations are are doing work very aligned to us. And talking about allyship, it's just, it, it brings me so much joy that we can come with a trauma-informed approach and, and really think through like, this is what we can do and offer, but let's find out what people actually need and let's give them what they need. And I think one of the, I mean, you think like, corporate and and like government and it's all about like this is what we have for you and take it and now I'm adapting more of a let me give you what you need not what I want to give you and that's something I really ask for from partnership it's like this is a reality of what they need I know you have a pretty package but it's not going to work 
because these people can't save five hundred dollars the way you're expecting me explaining it to me. Um, you know, they they don't have documentation to sign up to your free job trainings because they happen to be undocumented, and you're asking for documentation. So it's it's many things that maybe they don't consider, maybe they try to work around. And I, that's another cool part of my job is I get to bring those realities about who these people are mm. and what they need to be successful and how they can support them with that. It's not what you want to give them, it's what they want to accept. Absolutely. And it, it's centering the the voices of who matters in that moment. And I, when I think about a, a Black History Month and, and what I am celebrating throughout this month and the things that I continue to celebrate throughout the entire year, legacy always comes up. And I think black and brown people are fortunate and strong in that we have always known what our legacies are in spite of what the world tries to put on us. And so I wanted to ask you like, what do you hope is the legacy of Hamilton families and the work that you all do? Yeah that we do right by the people. Um, that's really it for me. I think it's it's simple and I think our, our goal is so sincere and so honest to say like, we do believe we can end family homelessness. Mm. And if we can be um, clear about how we do it because we should be doing it with the people we serve, not for the people, you know, we work together. So um, I see that as our legacy that we were an organization in San Francisco who like countrywide people want to come learn from because we adapt a program where we uplift the voices of those who have been systemically and economically put down and, you know, fighting back even just locally. Um, there's a lot, you know, we have great partners and a lot of them have more recently come through with their big money, their big tech money and said like, you know what, we can do something about it. So now we have to push back with the government and, and the structures that are in place because um, it's not fair to organizations either to be doing this, this work by ourselves um, because it's a problem way bigger than a lot of us. So yeah. uh, allyship for sure and ownership and in companion with, with one another. I love, I love that you, bring bring attention to that you know i often find that the people whose systems are responsible for the challenges we all face our communities face aren't always the people really putting in the work to solve the problem they created and so i love that you you call that out you know and and i wanted to also ask you for a person out there from your communities from your other brown communities the world you um the culture that you are birthed in if they're like you know I ask for their help and I want to be an ally to them too and, and share in that responsibility. What would you say to them? Like, how would you encourage them, support them in using their knowledge, their everyday humanity to support the goals of Hamilton families and become an ally? What would you say? Yeah, I mean, be honest. You know, um, if you say that you want to be supportive, ask, ask how you can be supportive. Um, and no way is too small. I mean, if you have $10 you want to donate, donate your $10. If you have a truck that you are willing to lend to move somebody into their apartment, lend it. Uh, no help is too small. And I think people are afraid to like judge themselves and think, oh, maybe I'm not doing enough or this is not going to make an impact. But if you help and make an impact for one person alone, that trickles down way beyond what we can witness ourselves. Yeah. So come and help, come and be involved. Even if this is a one time, even if you think it's not enough, um, it's it, it's a greater impact than any of us can actually see with our, with our own eyes. Definitely, oh, I, I agree 100%. Uh, I, I am myself, in the past year since or, or so since Corey's been working with Hamilton family have solidified how I believe I can be um, supportive to people experiencing homelessness, even in the limited way. I may not always have money, but what I do have is five seconds to see you when you speak to me on the street and, and say, sorry, I can't help you today. But also I learned today that 
if I don't have something physical to give, I may have the information to direct them towards a Hamilton Families or another organization that is also yeah. sharing in the goals of Hamilton Families yeah. for, for you know singular individuals who may be experiencing homelessness. So final question. <laughs> Thank you again for sharing your time with yeah. me. Yeah. I wanted to ask about how the people, the participants and the uh, allies that you work with, how they've affected you, how they've changed you or helped you um, grow in your identity as a person working towards these goals. Oh, I love that. Yeah, I've I've been with Hamilton a little over a year and I it's not only become a professional growth place, um, but really a personal growth place. You know, it's it's really easy to dehumanize the way we do our work, um, especially right now when we're in the pandemic and everyone's in the screen. Um, but you know what, when I can, when I hear like, hey, we need someone to make a quick run to deliver foods or someone needs to like help out at our transitional um, housing, I always wanna help because I wanna keep putting a face to the work that I'm doing mm. um, because that way I can sympathize and I can empathize with what I'm doing. And I, I mean, I learn from like the children's and their resilience, the, the children in our families, they have such resilience. Mm. And I remember that these people have real life problems that all they want is a little bit of help for. And I can do a lot. To, to help out with that. So it's inspired me. It's helped me grow, um, you know, just uh, personally, just I, and I really try to carry that message with like my friends and family. And I think they're all very proud to, to know that we, we do that work. And I think they're also at a point where like, when will we see the impact of that work? So I think it's also like a call to action, like keep bringing in folks to be part of it. I mean, there's nothing wrong with being part of it. And you're helping gen intergenerational, you're helping the parents, you're helping the kids see their parents succeed, something to look forward to. And that trickles down. Again, we do a lot of things that we don't witness, that we don't get to see ourselves. And we don't have to, you don't have to do the work because you need to see the effects of it. Just know that it's having an effect. And that's been something that I've learned a lot through to being here at Hamilton Families. Yeah, oh my gosh, thank you so much, Anna. Like that, I, I just love, I love getting to hear, you know, I've done a few of these today, getting to speak to some of your colleagues. And I think the message that I'm left with, getting this wealth of knowledge from what you do is that you all just really seem to understand the power that you all have. And it's a collection of people that go, I am an everyday human and I have so much power and ability to affect people's lives in a positive way. And to know that there's an entire organization out there who their core belief is that we believe we can end family homelessness and like that. One, I had no idea that even existed before, you know, Corey started working for Hamilton Families and I'm now like determined to do everything I can just to get that knowledge out there. And I was like, there's there's just so much we can do with that information. So thank you again for spending your time with me in, in getting oh um, Instagram a takeover for uh, Yeah. Thank you. This has been a great conversation. I'm glad we're having this. Thank yes. you for doing it and including us. Of course, it was my honor. It was a pleasure. So thanks, enjoy the rest Yay. of your day.